Welcome to Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia with a population of around 10 million people. Today I'm just going to have a walk around all the various touristy spots um, to see how much has changed since I was last here nine years ago. And I'm here at Monas, which is the national monument in Jakarta. And nine years ago, this was all traffic. It was crazy with motorbikes, traffic jams, and now it's an open green area with the monument in the center. And over the last nine years, the government has tried to make more green areas for the people of Jakarta to come and chill. And I am impressed. I wasn't too keen on coming here because I just had visions of what it was like the last time I was here. And oh my God, I like it. So Monos is one of the most important monuments in the capital. It is a monument dedicated to the fight for independence. It stands at 132 meters tall and the flame at the very top represents the burning spirit of Indonesian independence. Now underneath the monument is a museum dedicated to the independence that you can actually walk into. Well, that is quite impressive. Now there are various tours that you can do on these little vehicles. And there is a lot of security around here. And all the way around you've got a lot of skyscrapers, which shows you just how much modern inity, if that's such a word, is coming to Jakarta. Right, we'll have a wander up to see him get a bit closer. So although Monas is behind me, the entrance is in front of me. So I think this takes you through into the underground museum and then takes you all the way underground to there, which means you might have to pay Are they on a day out? Because they're taking lots of photographs. So it's 24,000, they've just told me, to get in, and the ticket office is down here. Oh, it is a lot cooler. Uh, Now, as usual, there is a difference between local prices and international. So I've just paid for my ticket. 24,000, which is quite cheap. And there is a lot of people coming in. All them military types were queuing up to get in just in front of me. So they must have been a day off. And the aircon down here is just so welcoming. Hi. What? Just one, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Back into the sunlight. There it is. 
that one. Now you can go to the top, I've read. But we'll have a walk around the edge, try and get my money's worth. Wow. And like, so that's the entrance into the underground museum. I've just realised I've got to walk back. This has been so updated since the last time I came. Wow. So it's a big wide open space. And then for each window there's a diorama. Giving you a little bit of uh, history. and the whole history going all the way around to the present day. So I've just been around the whole dioramas and some of them are really good. We've got a 3D effect in all of them. Um, and this is getting up towards the start of independence. The recognition of sovereignty Fascinating. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. But I'm going to try and find out how to get up to the top. So I've climbed some stairs. I'm inside the monument itself. And I'm just trying to work out how to get up to the top. But it's just seats all the way around. Oh, look at that. Now, according to a little map I saw outside, there is meant to be a lift that takes you to the top. <laughs> Everybody just seems to be sat around, doing nothing. But I think that's mainly because it's a lot cooler there, so they're probably just cooling off. But there doesn't seem to be a way to get to the top, and that's the map I was looking at, getting me out the way of it. But yeah, there seems to be no stairs, but just a lift to the top. Now, yes, I have to the hot bus. 
Just chill in the afternoon. I do like to see a bit more of the city. Yeah, that's all the financial side. This guy's good. He's got a lot of people over Busy place. So come back to the top of the tower, the monument, and the the way in to get in the lift because there's no way of walking down again. So the lift was a bit quicker the queue. Uh, I think more people are just up there enjoying the views of the smog around the city. And it is getting a bit cooler up here. But I think I need to go and see some of these spots around the park. So let's have a wander over there. So I'm leaving the National Monument behind and then I'm heading towards this pool which in this heat looks so inviting but there is a nice little statue to look at and get around the front of it so this guy is Bangeran Dipanegaro and he is a national hero of Indonesia and he was a mighty force against the the Dutch and for independence of the country. We'll get a bit closer to him. Now I've always believed that when you get a horse as a statue with its two legs in the air, that means the person who was riding died in battle. Don't know if that's true or not. But then it leads onto this pool. I am so tempted to jump in. Right, time to go to the next place. Right, I've come across the road from the National Monument and in front of me I've got uh, what I think is a military building. There is a guard through there. And when you look on Google Maps, there is nothing to say what this place is. Which is a shame, because I want to know what it is. But that is definitely colonial. Yeah, it's military. Let's see if I get arrested for taking videos of it. The guy and gate. That's quite modern. And the gates have got the symbol. I really want to wave at him, but let's see if I can go through. Ah, oh, it's a statue of someone with a bandana on. Looks pretty. And a big flag. So all the way along you've got the the symbol and then you go on to this building and there's a bigger version. Look at that. So I've just come around the corner and in front of me is the Istikal Mosque. Now this is the biggest mosque in Southeast Asia. I'm gonna try and get my camera through there. And at the moment, it is closed. So even though there's people in there, because Friday is the holy day, and today is Friday, I can't get in. Which is a shame because I've heard the architecture inside is quite good. The gates look really impressive. Spikes and everything. And although I do have the time tomorrow morning, 
I am tempted to go straight away to my next place and across the road Welcome to Little India, which I didn't realize was there. So I am going to try and cross this road and have a wander to Little India. But that's the other place I want to go through to. I don't know if you can see through the trees. That is Jakarta's Cathedral. I don't know where to go first. India wins. Sometimes I have no idea how I managed to get across these roads without getting hit. So this is Little India. Now I don't know much about this because I wasn't expecting to be here. But I'm assuming there is an Indian population around here. God, he didn't look too happy, did he? Uh, it's a coffee shop, a coffee shop, and don't cross the road yet. There is a all-you-can-eat cafe. And I can hear Indian music, which means if it's copyrighted, I need to turn it off. So I've just been on a little loop. I did have to stop uh, filming because there was a guy with a loudspeaker um, with some loud music which was probably copyrighted now you can probably see that the sun is starting to come down um, and as I'm leaving this area it's not very Indian at all um, so there's not a lot around here the water looks oh not that clean and I'm going to try and find the cathedral, so I need to walk back. So yeah, the sun is coming down. And there's another guy with a mic, with a loudspeaker, with a, some Indian music. And the reason it's so late for me to do this video is because of the fact, whilst I was at the National Monument, um, I met a British guy and we started talking and we found a coffee shop and we carried on talking for about two, three hours. And then I looked at my clock going, damn, I should be filming. So this is another end of the mosque with a dome. Nobody stopped me from going in yet. Get a bit closer. And as I said, in fact, there's a river. I just realized, because I just walked over the river, So this is the biggest mosque, according to what I've read, in Southeast Asia. I'm sure I've seen bigger than that. Of course there's a river. And then I'm gonna go over there to the cathedral. So as going past the mosque, it was actually finished, completed, being built in 1978 and I'm just reading off some site I've just found it was built to commemorate Indonesia's independence and you'll find there's a lot of buildings commemorating its uh, independence and it can hold up to 120,000 people wowzers that is big as my uh, dinner parties but this is the cathedral and it looks like another Busy road to cross. So this is the Church of Our Lady of uh, the Assumption. It's set, dedicated to the Virgin Mary's Assumption. Oh, can we walk in? Hello. It was built in a neo-Gothic style to mimic the great European cathedrals. Oh wow. The twin spires stand at 60 metres tall and are named the Fortress of Faith and the Tower of the Angels. Oh, that's beautiful. We get back out. Oh, 
Right, I'm going to try and have a walk in. And I am a little bit worried about the time because I can see it's going to get dark soon. Oh my god, there's a melt detector. Right, I'm in. There's a service. Wow. Somewhere around here is a museum dedicated to the church, but I'm not going to bother. I did find that inside that place there was a lot of tourists taking pictures and videos just like me. Um, now, if you want to have a picture taken with the Pope, look at that. I'm so tempted. So I've just had someone go past and I asked them very nicely if they would take my photograph of the pub. And here it is. And as I'm walking out, it's an unusual statue. Jesus having a midday snooze. In fact, I just noticed if you see his hands, this will be after the crucifixion. Oh, wow and his feet. I've not seen a statue like that before. Okay, so, right, oh, there's a bit of a sign there. Uh, this new Gothic church was built by um, Mr. Hulswit, it features a twin tower. Yeah, we know that. There you go. I am now gonna go and grab a taxi and I'm going to have to attempt to go to the old town. Now if you watched my video from last time you'll know that I was not very nice at all about uh, the city and I'm slowly changing my mind from the National Monument where I saw it nine years ago it has changed, they've made this place a lot better to architecture that I've not seen before when I was here last time to... but it's still too hot, it's still too busy um, the amount of people that I've spoken to feeling a bit on edge about getting their phone stolen while they're in their hands so in a way I'm glad I came out today um, and I'm glad that I am leaving tomorrow so yeah, let's find a taxi, get myself to the old town. So I'm now in Kota Tua, which is the old town. And this used to be the center of commerce for the Dutch ruled Batavia, which was the colonial name for Jakarta. So this place is full of Dutch architecture. And over the last few years, the government has tried to preserve this as best as they can, including pedestrianising it so there's no cars coming through. So obviously this was built by the Dutch East India Company in the 17th century. And this was known as the Queen of the East for its importance to trade. Now all along I'm seeing buskers and music, so I need to stop filming. So there's an actual band playing, so I'm hoping that I didn't recognise the music. But all the way along the street is lots of buskers. And this is the main square. 
So basically I've had to come to the other end of the square. There is a band over there, there's a band going on over there, and then there's another band over there. So there's music anywhere you go. And there's people get dressed up for the night to be living statues. Like that guy there. Oh, he's moving. Not the best statue in the world. So this square is called Fatahilla Square. Now this is the heart of Old Town. And you can see the sun is starting to set and it looks quite nice over there. So this used to be the administration hub of Batavia, as it was known then. And today it's, it's just basically a tourist site. Now that's got a sign above it saying Governor's House, that place there. And they have been trying their best to, as I said, restore it. And they have done a really, really good job. Especially as they've pedestrianised this place. And I can imagine nine years ago when that was here, it would have been full of traffic. So I think the old day turns do with the bands because this band behind me has stopped playing and that one stopped. But yeah, this is really nice. And with the sun going down behind me, it's a pretty, pretty view. And there's little coffee shops all the way around. So you can have a quick cuppa, which I'm tempted to do, but I do need to go back to the hostel and start thinking about my plans for tomorrow. But I wanna have a walk out of the square just to see what else is there around here. Because as I said, there's a lot of colonial buildings with lots of people taking photographs, everyone. I'm trying not to get involved in their pictures. You can get your picture taken on a bike. And they've kept all the names on the buildings. What's that? Gedon Jacindo? Is that Dutch? Museum there. And there's a couple of museums further on down that way. I do like what they've done with this place. And this is a Friday night, so people will be out and about to celebrate the weekend. And there are walking tours that you can do. Oh, there's a bike. So if you're not like me and you just like to do your own thing, you could join in with one of them groups and get the full history without doing any research. Oh, so there's a horror house. Do like a bit of horror. And I've seen the name Badavia around, so that they are keeping the old Dutch name going. Wow. Batavia. <laughs> and as you leave this side of Old Town, not as crazy traffic, but a lot of street food. So these are setting up for the Friday night where the tourists will be out in force. Oh, and it just ends here. That was very close. My God, I'm gonna walk around this way. That was too close for comfort. 
I need to get a new uh, baseball cap one day. And more importantly, I need to start thinking about new flip flops. These I've had for a few months. A little bit of a cut. And on my left foot, there is a small hole appearing. And I know the small hole will get bigger. They were singing. So yeah, the small hole will get bigger and then I'll think about getting a pair then, but we'll see how long they last before they fall apart. Cafe Batavia. Oh. He can read palms. You read my palms here. You don't often wash. You're my bad. You're in charge. <laughs> so I think this is it for Old Town. It's smaller than what I thought it'd be. Uh, I'm going from that street around and down that street down there. So I've just been online to find anything interesting around here. And oh, the statues are out in force. Mr. General, someone sat on nothing. But yes, yeah, so the museum here, the, the Weiyang Museum, um, it's got an extensive collection of Javanese shadow puppets. If you're into shadow puppets. And then you have this place here, which is the Jakarta History Museum. Now, this was originally built as the city hall during the Dutch colonial times. Uh, and now it serves as the History Museum and I mean it's closed now because it's late so these uh, living statues keep moving she's pretend to be a bride have a walk down here because I think this is still part of the old town and from here you've just got wide open areas for people to cycle if you want to flash and bike that is Very nice. So I am going to head back to the hostel now, start packing for tomorrow, work out how I'm going to get off the island of Java because I'm going to the next island up of Sumatra. I'm just a bit curious why people would want to hire a bike to go around the square without trying to knock people over. She hasn't got her lights on. And I think this place is going to get busier. Strange. And that was a quick tour of the touristy side of Jakarta. There is a lot more. I know there is. But... I got talking, so it stopped me from getting out and about. But I have been from each place via uh, grab taxis, the bike taxis. The majority of them have cost between one and two pounds. So it is a quick way, cheap way of getting around. And would I recommend coming to Jakarta? Yeah. But maybe for 
two nights. I don't think you could do any more. Um, it is claustrophobic. Obviously, you're not wrong, dear. Plenty of spaces. But the traffic is the craziest I've seen in Southeast Asia. And I've been to a lot of crazy places. So yeah, there's plenty of things to do, plenty of things to see. But two nights, one full day, see the lot, move on to other cities, other towns, around the country. But if you've enjoyed this video, then you know you've got to press that like button. If you want to see what the next island is like, then subscribe away, press that bell in the corner. But I'm going to go and find a grab taxi. So until next time, bye bye for now. <laughs>